the number one top selling manga of 2023 is... Oh! <gasps> All right. You had me worried there for a second. It has been a while since I've done an anime news stream. There's not really been any big anime announcements in the past few months until this month for some reason. And then this month, suddenly it's like the floodgates just opened. Everyone started announcing shit and there's a bunch of exciting things that I want to talk about. It is coming to the end of the year and my I myself, I am going to be working on my best of anime 2023. I haven't finalized my list yet. I have a few favorites that I am going to keep a secret so I don't spoil my own video, but we are starting to get the review of everything that represented this year in terms of anime and in terms of manga as well, because we have just gotten data for the top selling manga in 2023. And uh, this is always interesting to me because, okay, you might have your favorite mangas, you might have your favorite things that you wanna talk about, but this is data and data does not care about your feelings. But guys, enough about anime for a second. I wanna talk about food. Thanks to my friends over at Boksu. Boksu is the premium Japanese snack box. They work with family businesses all over Japan to deliver a new theme of authentic treats every single month. Let me tell you how it works. Every single month, you will get given a new box based on the theme for that month. But if it's your first month signing up, then you will get the Seasons of Japan, which is this boksu right here. This is kind of like a little taster of some of the best snacks I have to offer all year round. So I look forward to seeing this every single month they send this to me. Let's see, what do they have here that I haven't tried yet? Guys, as you know, I am absolutely addicted to matcha and they have a matcha stick cake that is chocolate flavored this sounds like my absolute dream i gotta try this out oh mm. i hate it when i try a new stack i know i'm gonna get addicted to because every time they send me a box i end up eating the whole thing straight away and i need another one right away god you gotta try this this is actually really good but guys, as you know, it's now Christmas time. And if you're stressing about doing your Christmas shopping, don't worry, because what better gift can you give someone than a gift of boksu? Honestly, this is the perfect gift for any fellow weeb you have in your life or anyone just interested in anime or just Japanese culture in general. Because one thing Japan does well is their food and snack culture. And this is the perfect opportunity to get someone into that. So if you want to give the gift of authentic Japanese snacks and support my channel, just click that link in the description and use code GANT for $15 off your first Boksu order. That's $15 off using code Garnt. Thank you very much to Boksu for sponsoring me today. Back to the video. You want to call One Piece mid? You want to call Jujutsu Kaisen mid? Well, too bad because they're probably going to be on this list. So at number 10, we have Kingdom. Okay. Holy sh**. Thank you. Kingdom is still relevant. Kingdom's such a weird enigma for me. I very rarely run into someone that has like watched or read Kingdom. In my day-to-day -day life, I don't know where all my fellow Kingdom fans are hiding because in my eyes, this is like one of the top selling mangas of all time, but I don't know where the f you guys are. I haven't read the new arc yet. I have not read the new arc either. Uh, one thing I do not understand right about kingdom is that it is the top 10 selling manga why does this not have an official release that's one thing that blows my mind this is one of the greatest manga in my opinion to ever be made it is by far to me the manga that has depicted large-scale battles better than any other piece of media i have ever seen in my life i can't break it down because it goes so in detail about how one person can change a tide of a battle while never making it seem like any large-scale battle is only dependent on one person. You know, it's there's so many different factors, so many different chess pieces that are going into play. And one of the things that I can really respect about the battles in Kingdom, how do you portray that there is a super smart anime character or manga character? Well, normally you pit this really smart anime character against this really dumb anime character to make the smart anime character look smarter. One thing that is insane about Kingdom's writing is that you can have two generals going up against each other. They make it portray it like these two generals are like 200 IQ each and the winning side is always like one person is thinking 23 
moves ahead. And it's just the other person who just happens to be thinking 24 moves ahead because they are both fucking geniuses. And yeah, it is one of the greatest mangas of all time. I, it's one of my favorite mangas of all time and more people should be reading it. Where do I read it? That's the unfortunate question. Where, where can you read it? Moving on to number nine, we have Tokyo Revengers. Okay, I thought this had already ended. Who invited blood to the party? You guys are going crazy. This doesn't surprise me. I am not a big Tokyo Revengers fan. I got through partway through the first season and it just didn't grab me, but I cannot deny that Tokyo Revengers is fucking popular. If Tumblr still existed, this shit would be all over Tumblr, okay? That's the target demographic that I'm not in. All of the Tumblr users had to go somewhere, okay? And they still exist. I still see this very, very popular in certain circles. It is super, super popular in Japan. I cannot comment on it because I personally have not gotten that far into it. Didn't really grab me so much. And I heard from some sources that it kind of falls off. So I didn't really have any push to continue reading what uh, I didn't read before. Moving on to number eight, we have My Hero Academia. <laughs> Well, this is not so surprising, uh, considering I believe that we are going into its final arc right now. Is that correct? That's lower than expected. That's about where I expected it to be, in my opinion. Let me search up last year's best selling and see where it was on the list. So it dropped from uh, number four five uh to uh number seven people say it fall fell off this is even more painful guys kingdom was number six last year <laughs> it's gone to number 10 but that didn't fall off again unsurprisingly my hero academia is still in the top 10 i do not believe that it will fall off the top 10 before it completely finishes i can't wait to see if this quote ages well or not but i think even though a lot of us have fallen out of love with the original passion we had for My Hero Academia, it's still always going to be relevant. It's still one of the biggest shonen that is currently serializing right now. If this is one of the weakest popular manga that is coming out, then Shonen Jump is doing a lot of things right. Moving on to number seven, we got Spy Family. Damn, Spy Family above My Hero? Wow. A gag manga above my hero? I wasn't expecting that, <laughs> actually. I, I, was, I wasn't expecting that. Maybe I was, considering Spy the Spy Family anime was airing this year. Maybe that gave it a big push, but you don't normally see comedy and gag manga going above like shonen action shows. So does this say more about my hero or does it say more about Spy Family? Either way, Spy Family, I don't know if safe is a backhanded compliment because to me, it is one of like the safest series. It's a very good manga and anime and you always know what you're getting into Spy Family and it's always just consistent and it's never let me down, but it's never made me look back and think, damn, that was a fucking banger moment. Or that was a fucking amazing moment. I just come out of Spy X Family feeling good no matter what. So number seven, definitely deserved. Going on to number six, Sam Dunk. <laughs> Salam Dunk? Jesus. Slam Dunk being like, yo, I got one more year in me. I got one more year. It's been like, what, 20 years or something since this series? Yo, I got, yo, I'm still relevant, baby. I'm still relevant. Like, even with the movie coming out, the fact that Slam Dunk can be number six, when, when did Slam Dunk stop serializing? It ended in 1996. And uh, it is still the number six top selling manga of all time. That is insane. I know it had a movie out, but still, that just shows, you know what, class is permanent. That's how you know there's a classic here when you can be 27 years later and it's still relevant. Of course, I'm gonna say it's deserved. It's Slam Dunk, goddammit. I personally think Slam Dunk is the greatest sports manga of all time. I don't think it's the greatest sports anime of all time, but in terms of sports manga, it is legendary. Moving on to number five. We're getting into the big boy numbers now. We have Chainsaw Man. Okay. Did I expect this to be higher? Okay, actually, where did it rank last year? Oh, it was number eight last year? Damn. I thought Chainsaw Man was more popular last year because of the anime release. So that is surprising that it's gotten even more popular. It's funny. I kind of feel like, and this isn't a comment on the quality of the stories. And Chainsaw Man fans, just, 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 put away the chainsaws for a second, but I kind of feel that Chainsaw Man has gotten 
overshadowed by the popularity of Jujutsu Kaisen. I feel like before the Chainsaw anime aired, everyone was just like, this is going to blow up the anime community. This is going to take over. The anime community is only going to be talking about Chainsaw Man. And I feel like Jujutsu Kaisen has done what everyone thought Chainsaw Man would do. Maybe this is going to change when we get more seasons and more episodes of Chainsaw Man. I will say right now, Mapper, please take your fucking time. I can wait. I'm not counting down the days, Mapper. I'm, I, I'm not counting down the days. Don't, don't worry, Mapper. Don't worry. I feel like the 12 episodes of Chainsaw Man did not impact the community as hard as everyone thought it would. Jujutsu Kaisen, on the other hand, you know, I'm calling it now. I, I've, I think it's going to be the top selling manga of this year. I can't think of any manga that's going to be the best selling manga of this year. But Chainsaw Man at number five, which means One Piece is going to be up there. Is it going to be the next one? Oshinoko! Oh my god! Oshinoko is that popular? Damn! The opening is carrying this man! Yo, Asabi be like, I did that. I would say that this is definitely deserved, not just the opening. There are some shows where, all right, the show got popular, but sometimes the opening has a cultural hit that just makes the cultural impact just so much higher. I skip a lot of openings, but I can't deny how big of an impact openings can have. I don't know how anime like Tokyo Ghoul got so popular if the opening didn't exist. No one talks about fucking Fire Force, but everyone knows about Fire Force because the first opening was a fucking banger, right? Noragami? I'm still gonna say Noragami is overrated, but holy shit, let's just say the openings of Noragami are insane. And there's a reason why these shows are one of the most popular shows you can find in my anime list, all right? Having said that, I have seen mixed reactions with a lot of people I've talked to with the Oshinoko anime, and I'm not just talking about Connor. I feel like, I don't know if this is a common reaction, but I feel like a lot of people got immediately hooked in with the first episode. And then because of these expectations, they didn't feel like the rest of the series hit as hard or was as interesting as that very first episode. I really enjoyed Ashinoko, but I can personally understand the opinion that the first episode gave an impression that it was a totally different show than what it was going to be. To me, I knew that it was going to be kind of like a Black Mirror-esque kind of take on the entertainment industry. And I like that shit. It's kind of weird to see how Oshinoko as a story has evolved from the first episode, which is just me doing fucking backflips on how, on the plot progression of what happens, because we have like fucking reincarnation. We have babies that can talk. We have all this like weird shit. And then it like, knuckles down on being a kind of like darker take on the entertainment industry. What this proves is Aka Kasaka just doesn't miss. Somehow everything he he writes, everything he's involved with just sells really goddamn well. I'm happy to see Oshinoko at number four of the top selling manga this year. At number three, it's gotta be his One Piece top two. That means, oh, there it is. One Piece at Number three, I mean, the biggest news every year is One Piece going to be number one. And you know an anime has gotten popular if it ends up beating One Piece as the top selling manga of the year. But the fact that it's number three is uh, not very surprising. I'm actually maybe even surprised that it's number three because that means there are two manga that outsold One Piece last year, two manga. I, I generally can't think of two manga that outsold One Piece last year because there's going to be Jujutsu Kaisen. I got it, guys. I got it. Boruto. All right. At number two for the top selling manga of this year, it is Jujutsu Kaisen? No, 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 no. There was something that was more popular than the Jujutsu Kaisen. I am amazed but scared because to me, from my opinion, nothing eclipsed Jujutsu Kaisen in the Western anime community. Like Jujutsu Kaisen blew up and has just gotten progressively more popular. And with season two airing right now, it is just hitting new heights of popularity with the anime community. It is just the show of 2023 that just like took over popularity, which means the number one top selling manga of 2023 is... Oh! <gasps> All right. You had me worried there for a second. Really? Blue Lock? 
Wait, wait, guys, guys. The World Cup wasn't this year, right? Oh, it was in December. Oh, shit, you're right. I completely forgot. Let me tell you, the Japan team absolutely carried Blue Lock sales to the fucking bank. Japan did fucking amazingly last year in the World Cup. Unfortunately, Blue Lock did lose out to the better sports anime and sports manga that aired that year, which was the World Cup itself. This was surprising, but now that I think about it, this does make sense. The World Cup definitely carried this. And uh, yeah, this is definitely one of the most different sports anime that has aired in a while. I am okay with Blue Lock. I personally liked it a lot more when I was watching the first half of the anime. And then I didn't unlike it. But I think the fact that I was watching the World Cup, I think to me, I was like, damn, this ain't as hype as the World Cup though. I think I'd rather watch real football. <laughs> okay, that was the top selling manga of 2023. Let's have a look at what else was on the ranking list. Free Ren, all right, all right. This is, I'm, I'm surprised Free Ren was this popular despite the fact that the anime just came out. That time it got reincarnated as a slime. That's still really popular. But this was also a very, very hot month for anime news. We got a bunch of different things being announced. The first thing that I want to talk about is Dan the Dan has an anime announcement. Let's go. Okay. This is funny because I believe in the very last stream, I got a message asking if I'd caught up to Dan the Dan. And I said, I have not read any more since what I've read in my manga stream. And the reason for that is because I pretty much am certain that an anime is coming out. And everyone's just like, oh, okay, okay, excuses gone, excuses, okay. Where are you guys now? Let's have a look at this trailer, shall we? Yo, Science Saru, let's go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, I remember that panel in the manga. That that panel went so hard and this. Oh, this looks good. That was a short trailer, but that's all I needed, baby. One thing already surprises me. Kensei Yushio is doing the music and Kensuke Yushio is personally my favorite favorite composer doing stuff right now. You know, I've only read the first few chapters of Dan Da Dan and his music fits the weird vibe of Dan Da Dan perfectly. Not only that, but it is Science Saru doing the animation and by God, if there is a animation company that I trust to do some of the weirder scenes, some of the more unhinged scenes in Dan Da Dan, it is Science Saru, all right? There were a few studios that would be on my wish list to adapt Dan Da Dan and Science Saru would definitely up there. So it is not Masaki Yuasa directing this because I believe this is his animation company that is producing it. But either way, this is already one of my most hyped new anime to come out. Do we have an air date? 2024 on air. Okay, 2024. Woo! I'm, I'm like personally wondering how they're going to do some of like the more sus scenes in this. Moving on though, Oshinoko season two has also been announced for 2024. And I believe they have a new trailer coming out. Let's go. <clears throat> PNG trailer. All right, all right, all right, all right. This is the trailer where the marketing team is like, we got one image, boys. What can we do with this one image? I am still very, very excited because I believe they are going to be doing the theater arc. Oshinoko filled that void for me that... Act Age. That's the one. Because I, I believe Act Age, if I remember correctly, stopped at its theater arc. A lot of people were disappointed with Oshinoko because of reasons that I said earlier. Um, but to me, Oshinoko it definitely filled that gap that Act Age once inhabited. I'm very, very excited for season two. It gets weirder from there on. You mean it wasn't? And it fell off after that. <laughs> this, this is every time I ask you guys. Does it get better after this? And, and they're like, no. No, it falls off. Moving on though, we have The Great Pretender, another season or another movie. I'm not sure what this is, but The Great Pretender is getting a sequel. And I don't know how to feel about this. I am happy 
I guess I really, really fucking enjoyed the first season and I was completely satisfied with everything that the first season did. The ending pushes your suspension of disbelief to its limits. And that was my problem with the ending of Great Pretender. Like it was like a small little blemish because I've really, really enjoyed the entire show. I'm still probably gonna watch this but this is not the one I'm like super, super hype about just because I was completely satisfied with everything I saw in season one. To me, it would have to do something above and beyond anything that season one had presented to get me back into this show. Moving on. This one kind of came out of nowhere. I did not know where the f this one came out, but Netflix announced that they are doing a Terminator anime. That did just... What? Where the hell did this come from? Either way, one thing I saw was that there seems to be a lot of crossover now between Western IPs and Japanese animation studios. I think Production IG can do a great job. Production IG personally are one of the strongest teams when it comes to adapting sci-fi shows, I believe. They did Heavenly Delusions recently, right? That was, that was fucking great. I didn't know that Terminator was still relevant if I'm being honest. I will get hype if Arnold Schwarzenegger is in this some way, somehow, or some, even if he just makes a cameo or something. That would be on my bucket list, just to see like the wildest sh you could have never dreamed of. Because that's not all. We don't just stop at the Terminator, guys. I like how someone said there should be a John Wick anime because uh, that has actually been fucking announced. The director of John Wick has confirmed that there are now plans in motion to make a John Wick anime. What the f is going on in the world of anime right now? We now have the possibility to get both Arnold Schwarzenegger and Keanu Reeves in a real anime. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a bit lukewarm on the Terminator anime. A John Wick anime? <laughs> Holy shit. I am all for it. Okay, hear me out. John Wick by Studio Trigger. <laughs> Oh, it will go to space. I kind of just, I would happily let it go to space. You know, you know, you know what would be even funny? Having like the John Wick licorice recoil, like crossover that we all never knew that we needed. But that would also be hype. It's getting to the point where I'm thinking what other big Western IP franchises is going to be announced for an anime? Because we've already had Suicide Squad. We've got now John Wick. We have got Terminator. What's next? Fucking Grand Theft Auto? It's just like a Breaking Bad? Keeping in that same vein though, it seems the Naruto live action movie is actually coming to fruition. This is like... <sighs> Number one, Polygon. Thank you for putting a Naruto movie as the headline and... <laughs> I saw this was going to happen. One Piece broke the live action curse. No, it was not the first good live action adaptation of all time. But to me, I believe it was the first well received live action adaptation of a massively, of a massively popular franchise. And because of that, now everyone looks at a live action adaptation and everyone's gonna go, well, they made One Piece work. No, I'm putting that shit in the background. I'm, I'm ignoring that shit. Maybe One Piece was destined to be the only good anime adaptation, guys. Who knows? Who knows? One thing that definitely makes me more worried about a narrative live action is that it's going to be a movie and not a TV series. I do not think that this would translate well. Live action series is one thing. Live action movie is a whole other thing. Because what are they gonna do? Just the Zabuza arc? I don't know how they would go about adapting this. As much as I enjoyed the live action One Piece adaptation, I don't want more live action adaptations. I just, I just don't. Naruto is just something that I don't think needs a live action adaptation. All right, moving on to up coming anime. Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai is coming back. This one seems to be an actual TV series. I don't actually, I don't know if it's a TV series or if it's a movie, but one thing that stood out to me is that it is a university arc. I was completely satisfied with Bunny Girl Senpai, but going to university? Now I'm hype. You know, we've had the high school phase. We don't need that anymore. Having seen the characters grow up, 
and going through a new stage and going through university, that genuinely sounds interesting to me. Wasn't rent a girlfriend set in university? Are you really gonna compare this to rent a girlfriend? You know, another manga or another series that started off in high school and then went to university and is actually goaded, unlike rent a girlfriend. Domestic girlfriend, baby. I love seeing more anime go into the university phase or seeing anime characters grow up and go into a new stage of life. Especially when it comes to romance anime where they kind of end up together and then the story just ends. And I'm like, why are you ending the story at high school? University is when the real drama happens. You think I give a sh about the stuff that happened to me in high school? No, university is when the real drama happened because it made me realize, oh, I'm somewhat of a semi-functioning adult now. I am responsible for my own actions. And if I don't turn up to lectures, I'm f***ed because the lecturer doesn't give a shit. University made me realize I want to kill myself. Okay, well, I'm glad to see that uh, you're still with us, my guy. Keep, <laughs> keep with it, man. I'm going to catch up to Bunny Girl Senpai. I haven't watched the two latest movies, but now I have a reason to catch up. Speaking of university students, all right? Who here has ever experienced a kotatsu? And if you don't know, what a kotatsu is, do you watch anime? Because Japan has released the first gaming kotatsu. <laughs> We've done it, boys. We have done it. You can now buy a gaming kotatsu. Actually, I think I might get one. Gaming with a desk, amateur shit. I want to game under my heated coffee table. This looks like the comfiest setup I've seen in my life. I'm gonna be gaming so hard guys, you're never gonna see me again. You're probably gonna find me dead under this kotatsu and I'm probably gonna be playing fucking hopefully not Honka. <laughs> hopefully I'm found dead with a respectful game. And moving on to next, all right that was that was a bit of a light bit. The Suicide Squad Isekai trailer has finally been released. Now I haven't watched this yet so let's have a look at this trailer. I don't want to fix her. The most sane Harley Quinn fan. Ooh. Oh god. Oh god. I didn't think Harley Quinn fans could get more horny. I, th I think it's going to happen. They're going to break the bounds of horniness. Ooh, okay, okay. <laughs> this is... This is fucking wild. I'm sorry. You tell me that this is a Suicide Squad isekai and my brain processes it and then I watch it and I'm just like, who thought of this? Why, why does this exist in the world? <laughs> oh man, Studio Wit carrying again, man. Studio Wit. Whew. Do they ever miss? Clayface is hot. What the f <laughs> Bro, they've anime-fied Everyone, man. Everyone's even hotter. Oh no. Now guys, it's not because I like Isekai. That genuinely looks good. And I, I do have a trust in Studio Wits. Come on, guys, come on. I know you guys are gonna watch this for Anime Harley Quinn. Don't fucking lie to me. Let's just say we have Anime Harley Quinn and we have that and Isekai. What more, what more can we ask for? What more can we ask for? This is what we needed when the East and the West meet, guys. Is the Terminator anime gonna be Isekai? Is John Wick gonna be Isekai? Cause let me tell you, a John Wick Isekai anime is gonna go hard. Can you actually fucking imagine that? I think this could be a sleeper hit of the season, especially with Studio Wit and the writer of ReZero at the helm. And from the trailer, it looks like it's actually going to be pretty fucking good. Oh, Arcane season two, all right. All right, all right, we, we can go over that. I forgot about that. Guys, if you didn't know, Arcane Season 2 is coming out. It is not, that is not anime news. Hello, my anime list. Welcome to I Don't Give a F***. Let's just watch this one more time. Top 10 animes that Joey's not gonna watch. Ooh, November 2024. You know what, guys? 2024 is a long wait, but it's okay. Let them cook, guys, let them cook. I feel like people need to learn more patience with some of the exciting sh** that gets announced because God forbid there is already enough things for us to be watching. Let's not take a page out of Mappa's book. When things get announced at a reasonable date, let's just let them cook, guys. Let's, let's just let them cook. What I hope with Arcane Season 2 is that we get to see more areas that were not explored. That would be fucking hype. Have you seen the Spy Family Street Fighter collab? I saw that on my Twitter recently. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's 
They fully animated it. Okay. I thought this was going to be in game. Yeah, damn. Oh, sh okay. What? What? Yo. Yo, that's sick. Yo, gameplay versus cutscene. Am I right, guys? If only I played Street Fighter, god damn it. If only I was into uh, fighting games. Gundam anime? There's a new Gundam anime out. Is this is this the one you're talking about? But wow. now now I'm confused about what this one is. So I'm gonna watch this one. You heard the major. Oh, it's CGI. Yo, is this Unreal Five? Yo, where the f did this come from? Okay, okay. You know what? This doesn't actually look bad. All right. You know what? We don't need a live-action Gundam. This is this is the closest we're gonna get to a live-action Gundam. Well, I can definitely say that it's probably going to look better than x Hi right, guys, my name is Gigic. Since I forgot to record a f***ing outro, I'm recording this in post. If you like this video, make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe, and also subscribe to the Twitch. <laughs> Also, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash I've been Gigik, and I'll see you guys next time. Jane, oh shit, wrong YouTuber.